Good evening, free enterprise fans. We have ourselves a hype race tonight. Big Dunka, Hippos, Kobahi, and Supremacy. My name's Vitasia. I'm joined tonight by the man, the myth, the legend, Rivers McCown. How are we doing tonight, Rivers? Looking forward to this race, obviously. It's a it's a big one for everybody involved. There are only six matches left. Kobahi is the only player who has played two matches and been undefeated so far. So there is a lot on the line. There is a lot of good players in this race. I'm really excited to see how this one turns out. Absolutely. Every single runner in this race has at least one first place finish in races that they've pre previously done. Um, Supremacy, this is going to be his last race. He's already at 10 points, so in kind of a good spot for himself right now. Kobahi, as you said, uh, has run the table so far. First place in his two races. Tonight's going to be another one. Uh, Big Dunka, this is going to be... He has two races left, and he's at six points. Hippos uh, has two races left, and he's at five points. So it's, it's crucial for, I think, Big Dunka and Hippos more because they're on that lower end. Uh, Supremacy is in a good spot. Kobahi is also in a good spot. But can Kobahi keep his winning streak alive? Yeah, uh, and Big Dunk have actually had something interesting when he he had he went uh, first to third in his second race. So all of a sudden he was, I've got 16 possible points on the board, and now it's like I'm fighting for my playoff life, and that's just kind of how uh, random this randomizer league happens to be. <laughs> it is. I mean, rando can rando you sometimes, uh, but uh, that's kind of the nature of the league race, and you have to play to seed a little bit. Um, also joining us as well, Night Dew is doing tracking, and a big shout out as well to Scala Kitty uh, doing our restream. So we got uh, the full accursed crew behind the scenes, ready to jinx the seed. Whoa, I didn't know I was approved by Burger King. Wow, chat, thanks. I, that means a lot. I, I've always loved their Whopper. Please sponsor us, Burger King. We will take any sponsorships, Just, just call us. <laughs> All right, so we're about to get started here from the looks of it. The DKC start not exactly what you want to see. Um, Yang a little bit better. But the Magma Key opens up the entire world early for our runners, so this should be pretty interesting. Yeah, and I love seeing what runners decide to do with that early magma key. Do you go ahead and dip down and at least get a couple, like, you, you speak to Young down there in the self cave immediately? Do you clear that out, or do you just keep on going uh, in the overworld? Yeah, you definitely want to make the Fabul trip only a one-time thing by speaking to uh, Yang in the self cave. But other than that, I feel like routing is kind of up for grabs here. You see Dunka going right for it, and everybody else heading to Baron to start things off. Yep, looks like we're going to uh, just an immediate tiara there. That's uh, some nice equipment right off the bat. And we're going to get uh, Edward in uh, the Baron Inn. So I think our runners are going to try to avoid that if they can. Uh, we'll see what else we have available to us. Vitasia. Did you know that Edward can hide from things and that sometimes it's very, very powerful against the right bosses? I mean, yeah, if you want to. <laughs> the haters are out in force, folks. I'm, I'm absolutely a hater, but, you know, that's that's just me. Um, did see a heroine robe already as well in Rose's house, so uh, we might have ourselves a nice uh, frontline fighter if we get any of our... Uh, wonderful women who can equip that there's some really good gear in uh baron yeah for sure it's a, a good starting point especially you, you know kind of want to see that before you go diving into these shops and uh finding some things that you can actually sell off like the heroin robe if you absolutely need to cabins look like are in the baron end so that might be something to pick up for a little bit and dunka is uh going around here in the tamra you know, item, sh well, I item cash, I suppose, just picking up some stuff. Found an assassin dagger. That's not horrible, just not useful right now for either of our characters. So we got Hourglass 3s in Troya. We've got uh, vampires in Tamra. We've also got Starbales in Troya. So early on, one of the things that I really like about 
the, these seeds is that you get more item diversity early on. Um, you can get sirens very early and make plays with those. You can make, uh, so, uh, you have a lot more shops to find hourglasses, vampires, that sort of thing. Absolutely. I see Kobahi actually found a dragon whip that was available there in uh, the mist basement of, of Rydia's mom's house. So combine that with the heroine, you, Rydia can be a pretty strong fighter initially. So now we've got hippos checking for bull. We've got Big Dunka going to give us our second key item, it looks like here. Twisting down the land of some monsters. Because actually it looks like he saved so that he can rob this place blind. So that's interesting. Yeah, I like that play because you can find some really interesting things. It's a pretty item dense location. I see Edge that's sitting there in uh, in our wonderful uh, Kaipo Sand Ruby turn in spot. So that might be pretty interesting there. That's a Sand Ruby that I think everyone will, will dodge to turn in if they absolutely can. And there are life potions in Land of Sun Monsters, so that's that'll make things easier on the early on. Uh, they're guaranteed to be overworld, of course, but here, you know, when you when you're diving, this is always nice to find. I was going to go ahead and activate the hook, and Dunka giving us our check of the underground bosses. We've got a star and a dark elf, so number of lunar bosses that could actually be favorable to find there, some that are really nasty to find there. And Dark Elf in that magic spot isn't too bad either. Did also see a Rune Axe in Troya, if people end up going there, and a Twin Harp. Okay. Music Seed. Hype! I'm down with this. I've, I'm super excited for this one. Uh, one of the things I really like to find when I'm searching for chests early is that Moon Veil that Big Dunka just picked up. So he now has... Uh, a free way to win a couple of fights if he really needs it badly. Uh, it's really nice if you're going to get stuck somewhere to, you know, have those in reserve to kind of bail you out. Oh, Kabahi ditching the dragon whip and the heroin robe. He says, no, I want my money. It's my money and I want it now. So Hippos is making the antlion play. Everybody else uh, has still yet to really check deep into a spot. Dunka is going to activate uh, the Yang's wife item one, although he may not uh, uh, do it immediately. He may eventually get there. And chat pointing out there's another heroin robin ant line. So even though uh, he ditched a heroin robe. There, there's more in in the Antlion game. So we'll see what our first boss is. Hippos is going to be our first one to fight anything substantial at this point. Looking like a Mylon. Looking like a Mylon. Mr. Z, okay. And this is nice because a Mylon is weak to fire attacks, and Young starts out with a fire claw. So even though he's level 10, he'll still be able to do quite a bit of damage to him right now. Yeah, of, all, of the bosses you could find here, that was really one of the easier ones for sure, given the Yang start. Uh, looks like we've got Dunka and Kobahi both looting Dwarf Castle. No, no, sorry, just Dunka looting Dwarf Castle. Kobahi looting Fabul now. So big Dunka going all in on these chests underground early on. Yeah, it's a little bit interesting that he's prioritizing, you know, getting the loot as opposed to getting the key items or even the the uh, the other characters at this point. So, uh, it, I mean, he's got a oh a crystal item, so that's he's already got a Cecil, so it's crystal shield looks like. Yeah, I, I guess by going to a lot of shops early, the idea banned both your inventory dealing with these early boxes as well as your eventual uh, cash inventory for buying things. So I get that play. It's a sensible play for sure. Absolutely. Oh, look at that. A pan in Antlion Cave. So Hippos <laughs> is actually going to be rewarded for not going there first. That's and, rando. <laughs> and Dunka's going to throw something when he gets there. 
everyone duck when they dunk a C is that pan, because he's going to throw something through someone's screen, and it's going to come through. And it might just be a pan. So Hippos is poisoned right now, so I wonder if he's going to go over. Yeah, he's going to hit Fabul, actually, to start off with, which kind of negates not having to double dip this, but it will give him a full health refill and clear his poison as well if he goes ahead and does this particular boss. Coffins also. That's nice to see. That is a great item to find early on. Uh, we've already seen um, what the dolls early. So, so really nothing that has really been immune to these status effects, or sorry, that has been vulnerable to these status effects. So finding that now, you've got to wonder about the other bosses and just how easy that will make some of them. All right, so now we have Kobahi doing his Mylan Z fight, and he's kind of right in line there. Hippo stayed a night at the inn, so he was going to clear that. Maybe he's I imagine he's going to be dipping out now because you're not staying at the end if you get a free health refill if you start this. Yeah, he's leaving. Yeah, that was an interesting play. Uh, Hippos hasn't really played this very much. He's very good um, to the past randomizer. I think he finished third in their most recent tournament. So he's he's a, he's a very good random player, though perhaps not uh, as familiar with, with this game yet. Uh question in chat, why did they remove commands such as Dark Power and Bear? And Prince Shiva, that is not necessarily a removal. That is uh, something that is only available in the J2 flags. We are running J flags, so all of those uh, commands, fight commands that are only available in the Japanese version have been removed under this set of flags. And to better answer your question, why, why they were taken out of the uh, League flags um, with less of the more powerful weapons available. I wanted to actually open up more mage heavy routes, as you've seen kind of the rise of reflex strats in, in this format. Um, some people have been finding it easier to just go with that than to you know, try to worry about, for instance, playing with like a, a Sid with you know an ogre, an ogre Axe or a Cecil with a Ice Brand or something like that. It just makes things a little bit easier for everybody. Hippos does find Rydia up on Mount Hob, so uh, that Dragon Whip and Heroin Robe might come in handy here directly. And he he corrects his, Prince Shiva Chris the question, yeah, why were they taken off of the USA version? Uh, long story short, uh, the Japanese developers thought American consumers were dumb. Were they wrong? Who knows? Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm biting my tongue because there's a lot of things I could say right now. I was hoping to get at least one uh, Vitacious Squirm here. Okay, so what else we got? We got Hippos hidden up to Silvera. We got Kobahi claiming his Rydia. Donka about to do the same. And Supremacy is looting the Dwarf Castle chests, the underground chests. Those are ones that are pretty rare to see looted, actually. Uh, we're seeing Sirens and Silvera, so we have ourselves an easy grind. Uh, some people, if we get an early Darkness Crystal, I can still see some people might going for the Weakness uh, D-Machine grind, just because it's a tiny bit faster, and all of these runners are very well experienced. Uh, but when you have Sirens, you know, you can even do kind of a mini micro grind right now between Sirens and the Coffins. The interesting thing about those Sirens will be if they find a character kind of worth leveling, because right now, Rydia is going to get better from leveling, but she's not necessarily going to get a Quake spell like Palom would. Uh, Yang is going to get better by leveling, but he's not exactly going to be like hitting like a truck if he's, you know, level 30. So the race becomes when you have these Sirens, who are you actually going to use them on? And I think you'll see our runners try to make a more character-focused route if they can. Absolutely. So Dunk is in Antlion Cave, so he's about to be rewarded with that pan. Ah, he's, he's so happy. 
Um, Hippos is on his way down to the underground for the first time, though. He's he's in pretty good shape right now. D I'm seeing that Dunka did actually nope out of Rydia, so he sold his dragon whip, sold his heroin, and immediately finds Rydia on Mount Hobbs and says, well, I I've committed. We've got Bacchus in the Dwarf Castle item shop as well, so other than Cure 3, I think we've seen pretty much every powerful item that uh, can be in these flags in a shop is on the board now for everybody. It's like, why can't I get one of these uh, flags when I'm running a scene? I'm like, I get all the sirenless flags. God. And you see, you see hippos going right for the sirens, uh, killing an egg. These eggs are worth 34,000 experience. They hatch into yellow dragons if you let them. Yeah. By which I mean you don't kill them with an attack or something. And uh, so he is going to grind up a little bit here. It's get, interesting uh, that he's already... 30. Yeah, it's interesting that he's already grinding up, even with the Dark Knight Cecil. Dark Knight Cecil is uh, horrible. I mean, he is worse than Edward in terms of his HP, you know, ascension. You know, he gets, you know, nothing equipment. So it's really interesting that he's already doing a bit of a grind, even with Dark Knight Cecil. That tells me that he's anticipating ditching him and not going to eventually get him up uh, to where he's a paladin. Well, I mean, some runners just do not like to do ordeals, so I, I, I definitely understand that play as a as a general as a general rule. Um, and we haven't seen anything yet that would really lead you to want Paladin the Cecil either. We haven't seen the Excalibur or the uh, Crystal Sword as a reward yet. And we see Kobahi equipping Rydia with that with samurai arrows, a bow, and that heroin. Uh, Riddy is going to be doing some work for Kobahi here directly. And I believe Kobahi is going to be the first into Fabul here. Has Koba Kobahi hasn't gone underground, right? So he's going to have to double dip Fabul. Tracker says he's got the pan, so... And it's totally free, folks. <laughs> all that leveling, all that grinding, whatever, it was pointless. Uh, King and Queen Eblin will just take some shots at you and then... Uh, all or you can uh, do some fighting on the on King Eblin and Queen Eblin will uh, automatically disappear depending on the spot. So Kobahi playing the weighted out strategy, uh, not bad given what he has right now. There's not a whole lot of damage on his party. This is true. You know that does raise an interesting question. If Eblin invaded Fabul, who would win? Hmm. Put me on Team Ev1. I think they want it more. I think on one hand you're right. On the other hand, uh, Fabul was able to withstand a Baron attack, and Evelyn was not. So, well, I mean, technically neither of them were able to withstand an attack. I guess Fabul didn't like get perished, but they did lose their crystal, which is all that Baron cared about. This is going really deep in the storyline. Wow. I was going to say, this is this is what nerds talk about. <laughs> it's theoretical matchups that will never, ever happen. So there's the defense sword on uh, King Fabul here. Or, sorry, in the, uh, the Sylph Cave. My apologies. And Kobahi will be the first. Oh, no, maybe he won't. Maybe he's forgotten <laughs> that he has the pen. Or maybe he did it earlier. I didn't actually see. White robe at Fubul Defense. Okay. So basically, so far, we've gotten a lot of items that make Radia feel good about herself. I mean, lots and lots and lots of items for Radia and Big Duncan noped out of Radia. I mean, he's he, that will feel bad in retrospect. But that's kind of what happens periodically in Rando. You make a gamble, you make a decision. And you have to make that split second call. Sometimes it ends up biting you a little bit. Yeah, we've already seen the dragon whip. We've seen sorcerer. We've seen heroine. We now have white robe, which she can wear, even though it doesn't really direct her defense. We've seen tiara. Like it's really been an, an avalanche of things for Rydia early on.
So Hippos is also in his King and Queen of Eblin fight. So yeah, he he's the one who really grinded up preparing for this fight. I we'll see what he ends up doing after this. Mateja, I'm so happy that you're here for this as I become a meme on RPG Limit Break. <laughs> I was gonna say you you you're uh I'm not even doing anything. I'm not even doing anything and I'm a meme. This is great. So what do we got now? Hippos is going to turn the pan. We'll see the items there at least. Uh, yeah. Dunk uh, also finishing Fubul. I think he can only see one of them, right? He hasn't actually hit Yang with the pan. Yeah, he can He can get the first one, which is what he intended to be able to do. Um, I think Hippos will be able to do... Uh, he, he Did he do both? Hippos did have the pan. Yeah, he, yeah I think he hit her. Hit uh, Yang already, so... Yeah, he should he should get both of them. I like how we're just casually talking about culinary violence here. Yeah, I think I think Yang's been hit with the pan by hippos. It's all right. Whoa, is he in the underground? That's crazy talk. A ribbon. <laughs> Start a shrug. <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> that chain run dr ran dry pretty quickly. <laughs> And yet again, another thing for Rydia that would make her awesome if you picked her up. Sorry, big dog. All right, so we've seen the antline item. We've seen everything that Fubu has to give us. I haven't seen anybody do Baron Inn yet, and we haven't seen anybody do the Twin Harp. Mount Ordeals. Uh, Dwarf Castle and Babel are open, although pretty unlikely plays at this point, given the state of everybody's parties. And then there are those two um, two friends hanging out down in Land of Some Monsters, which are kind of intimidating at this point as well. A little bit, yeah. I thought, you know, at this point in time, unless I'm willing to do a grind up to about level 25, even then, I have Dark Knight Cecil. I'm doing what Hippos is doing. He's climbing Mount Ordeals. Hippos making the plays today, folks. I mean, I'm not saying it's the right play because I'm a scrub, but it's the play that I would make. Yeah, this is an interesting spot to be in for sure because none of the runners have to feel happy about their damage output at this particular moment. So the idea of putting a defense sword on Pallet and Cecil is appealing, as the chat pointed out. Also, leveling Radia for like a virus something would be kind of appealing too. So. Yep, we see Kobahi doing a little mini grind right now. Hippos finds the CPU up as our first boss. This is kind of an interesting spot. This, uh, is, a, this is a terrible spot for having for having this party because you cannot really do any non-direct damage to it outside of like uh, what, like Chocobo. <laughs> You're just back row attacking the CPU for like 80 damage a turn. Yeah, I mean it's not it's not great, and more than that, you don't really have a healer, you just try to outpace the damage that the Mazer attack does to you. Now, the Mazer does 10% of your health every attack, and then if you keep him alive, if you kept the healing alive, it will heal 10% of the CPU's health. So you can kind of gauge how much health that the CPU spot will have at each point in time. Big Dunka looks like he's going back up to Hobbs and going, I have been given way too much stuff. For <laughs> I give up. Fine, I'll take her. Jeez. <laughs> yeah, chat pointing out that uh, Hippos has put two Charm Claws on Yang. Um, charm Claws actually lower his accuracy, and in this specific case, attacking uh, from the front row to the opponent back row, that's even makes it even worse. So that explains why he's doing like no damage, even though he's like level thirty, I think. Double Charm Claws. Horrible, horrible idea. Maybe not horrible, horrible, but not, I mean, it increases his agility, so he goes faster, right? Correct. Oh, this is gutsy. Stardusting. Nah, he was counting damage. He had it all the way. But yeah, that was, it's not that that boss is actually difficult in that spot. It's more just that it's so slow with this party. And there's Rydia learning virus, so the rest of this just became a whole heck of a lot easier for hippos. And now he gets a free boss to top it off here. These two guards, uh, you can stop them, you can use coffins on them, so I mean, 
given how late in the item route we are, we should have many ways to deal with these guys in a fun, quick fashion. Or as the uh, sound effect goes, bloop, 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 bloop. Yep, using coffins. Dunka getting his Kidia. Kind of, you can hear Big Dunka sighing from here. It's like, fine, I'll get her. All right, so I'm about to find out what is on top of this. Is drum roll. Very slowly. <laughs> so, so, I mean, this is the worst drum roll. Well, 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 look what we've had here. Look what we got here. So not only does he get Paladin Cecil, but he also gets access to two other characters, and that can include uh, Edge or Fusoya, the two most powerful characters in this format. So that is a really nice find early on. Probably going to see him chain right into that in immediately after this. I was going to say, because you can do that and do the Twin Harp while you're over in that area together. Just kind of loop all of that into one. Well, you actually wind up uh, back at Baron Castle after you do Earth Crystal, but you could do uh, Twin Harp first. That would be a way to, to, to navigate that and make it feel aesthetically correct or whatever you want to call it. It's, it's routing efficiency. <laughs> and as... Uh, as Bill and Fetish just points out, yes, you can also rob Troya uh, treasury. So that's... And now we see Kawahi and Big Dunka both making this Surf Crystal play as well, so they'll be right on Hippo's heels. I mean, at this point in the race, you kind of have to do it. And this is one of those instances where I think everyone's going to feel forced to go ordeals. You don't have a whole lot of characters. You're not given a whole lot of other routing options. You're... you're you know, the other option is to try to grind up Dark Knight Cecil, Rydia, and Young in order to do, like, Dwarf Castle or something, which seems like a horrible idea. I would much rather attempt uh, at least see what's in Dwarf Castle do or do first, to be honest, just because you have the extra character. But I, I can't fault with this line of reasoning either. Uh, I'm just going by kind of my own gut feel with how this seed has looked early. You know, there's something in the underground because we got there early, so what will be? And looks like he's also coming over here, going to get the Edward that's in Baron. Yes, I'm sure he's interested in Edward and not the uh, key Adam at the spot. It's all for Clearly. Edward. It's all for Edward. Edward, this one's for you. <laughs> and I think I, Hippos is actually making a smart play here. I think that actually will kill all the dolls. <laughs> yeah, kicking, yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, I, I love when we make a world where like totally useless uh, commands in FF4 is actually turns out to be pretty good. So elements behind this isn't that hard of a fight at this point, given Hippos' levels and the virus easily taking care of that. Yeah, virus, I mean, it, remember, Hippos did that grind earlier, so with Rydia, with virus, a lot of things become a whole lot easier. Darkness Crystal! Hey, that's awesome! Oh man, that is that is not what I would want to see if I were Hippos right now. <laughs> I great, mean, uh, great, great item for the long term, obviously, but, but now your routing paths have opened up so much. There's so hey, many different ways you could go, so many different things you could, uh, so many different ways you could try to play this. Uh, if you want to gamble, you can gamble on Moon. If you want to do the rest, then, you know, somebody else could gamble on Moon and snipe you. So that's, uh, that's not what you want to see. And big, what's happening on Big Dunka's screen also, not not what you want to see. But I think he might get oh, out of this. Oh, yeah, that, that was rough there. Woo! <laughs> Easy every time, folks. Hippos is immediately turning in that darkness crystal as well. He's he's going up. He's he's at least going to get the free moon man or woman. 
But yeah, this is the freest of seeds. So you, you had the magma key right off the bat to unlock everything. And then you got the darkness crystal right next door in Baron Inn. So, I mean, this is like just about everything is unlocked except for your fetch quest items at this point in time. So much of the world is open to you and you have your leveling options. It's just get your characters and then what can you do most efficiently? If you're familiar with the uh, the Z1 randomizer, they have a community thing called Router Zelish, and this seed has just become. <laughs> this is now a router. All right, hippos, where, where are you going to go for us? Are you going to show us? Well, I don't even know if you have to check to see what's in the shop at this point in time. Well, you could find Cure Threes, so... Uh, and we don't know if he's checked out every shop or not. Obviously, that way too much for us to keep up with. But you definitely want to see the character. I would probably want to check out what's in K Bahama because you can see what the boss is and kind of make an educated play if you want to go for it right now or if you want to come back later. Yeah, and, and keep in mind, remember, Hippos has... You know, he's in mid-27s, and then he has, like, a level 5 Edward. I don't know if he's quite ready to take on anything at the moon. And There's we have Cane Man. There's a beef tank. I mean, that's super nice. You already have your frontline fighters and and Edward. I can't wait till Edward, you know, proves his value in this seat and just shows you wrong, Vitasia. I can't wait. You, you think it's going to happen? I'm counting down, counting down the minutes until it happens. And yeah, it's probably going to happen. But but it's a, it's fun to think about, you know. So you know, if anything, the moon, we'll go back to uh, Earth. I'll make you a deal. If I ever lose a race because I don't pick up Edward, I will, I will gladly concede that one. Okay. Anyway, so. So we play tomorrow night, is that right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, Come we actually on. race tomorrow night. Come on, Edward. <laughs> Feel the Edwards. So yeah, let, uh, while everyone's kind of running around in different locations, just a reminder, there is more Final Fantasy IV free enterprise action coming up tomorrow night. And all this week, we really are, are at the tail end of our league. Tomorrow night at 7 o'clock Eastern, right here on RPG Limit Break. Uh, Big Dunka again, Ginger Damas, Rivers McCown, and myself. So uh, both Rivers and I are racing with Big Dunka and Ginger Damas tomorrow uh, at 7 o'clock Eastern right here on RPG Limit Break. So you should absolutely catch that and watch Rivers like rub my face in Edward. Yes, uh, and if anything I say tonight sounds off base, it's definitely not because I'm playing with Tasha tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> So we got Hippos doing the grind now, getting Kane some levels with that defense sword. Um, kind of wondering where he's going to take this next. He's got a lot of open options. He does. I mean, the only real rough thing about Hippos is he still doesn't have a white mage. So, I mean, Kidia is has gear one, so that's something. Answer might be Dwarf Castle. He's taking the heal here. Doesn't mean he's committed to it, but usually if you take that heal, you're either going back to grind some more or going to Dwarf Castle. And no, just gonna ignore me. Cool. Okay. Like it's all right. It's all right. He's he's going back to the upper one. I think he is gonna be doing the twin he's, harp. We're yeah. finally doing this play. Okay, good. So we'll get to see some more info. Uh, now everybody has the Earth Crystal, so everybody has done ordeals at this point. And we are having a massive party over here with Kabahi Supremacy and Hippos, both in the uh, greater Troya area. Ain't no party like a Troya party. They do have like the, the, the most residents in this entire fictional world, folks. Dunka taking care of the spot early here. Dunka actually really Falling behind, I think, because of the leveling, because he doesn't have much to do except for Stardust Rod right now. Unfortunately, yeah. I mean, he could level right now if he wanted to, but, you know, I tend to think that 
he might feel a little bit behind because of the early plays that he made and then seeing the pan immediately afterwards. So he might feel as though he made a bad gamble. So he's playing from behind and, and trying to play catch up. And that's a horrible feeling to have because that's when you start playing a little bit rough and making some mistakes. All right, so let's see what are in all these Earth Crystal chests. Nothing, 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 like a cabin. Flame Spear, I mean. Diamond Ring, Poison Claw's pretty good. Strength Ring's pretty good. Full Moon if you get Edge. Moon Veil's nice. I would, I would, I would call that like a 4 out of 10 uh, Earth Crystal check. Yeah, I mean, I, I might even put that at a 3 out of 10. That, that was not, not a hype cave there whatsoever. Oh, and we have music over here on Kobahi here before too long. Kobahi, first one to music. All those supremacies right behind. Chad, I'm going to need to see your spoons, your harps, and whatever the music hype you've got for us. I'm just going to be quiet so I can listen to the music otherwise. Skala keeping us in suspense. With Dang this, it, Skala. With this change to supremacy. Blast. Blast her and her restreaming powers. Some good old CT music, it sounds like to me. Yeah, that's some, some good music right there. Hippos, meanwhile, uh, is in Tower of Zot and gets these Lunars. I mean, I guess this is a spot where Edward can come in handy. Right? Time for Edward to shine, baby. And he might have to because hippos accidentally attacked with them, and yeah, that's not that's not what you want to do. I feel like in this case, uh, got mega, mega sisters at dark elf. Um, it's not terribly hard fight given the rune axe and Cecil carving through them for Kawahi. Luckily, it looks like this is a pretty low damage magic spot. Although Edward face plants immediately. I mean, he should have hid, right? Uh, that's that's he, he should have hid, yes. Yeah. Cause worst case scenario, that's when uh, if he hides and stays hidden, then eventually they will uh what, toad themselves? No, if he hides they will wind up virusing themselves in this state actually. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's actually really fun to watch if you've ever seen a cata seed where that's like the only thing you can do. <laughs> but uh yeah, pretty obscure strat. Edward has a lot of obscure strats, to be honest. And I'm seeing pass is what Kobahi ended up getting from, yeah, from uh, this particular spot. So uh, French vanilla pass kind of right in the same neighborhood as when you originally get it. Yeah, that's an interesting item to find with uh, three of our four runners having dark. You, you got to kind of think that with them more towards wanting to find something Earth rather than playing the moon. And you might also see some runners like play against that idea entirely. So creating creating some tension here. Hippos has taken out the, the these lunars. Yeah, it looked a little rough there for a while, but he was able to get through them. And yeah, it's we're just looking for the crystal at this point in time, but there are so many spots 
we haven't, I mean, we haven't even begun to touch every place that we can get to at this point. And look, we have a white mage. Yeah, you got a squishy white mage here. Um, this actually is a good spot to find her, though, given the rest of the party's levels, because if you do the whole experience slingshot trick, if you grind her up in one big O and she triples her experience, she can get pretty high uh, HP. And then, of course, there's Edward. So, once again, Vatasia, Edward stays. Uh, I'm pretty sure he's going to ditch Edward. No, don't do that. No, why? He's thinking about it. No, no, that's too bad. <laughs> Edward glitching out the game with one of our favorite graphical glitches there. Uh, for some reason, this tends to happen a lot in Tower of Zot. Uh, that second character screen will get very uh, blurry and blurred up. An Octo Mam at the spot. That's pretty nice to see. Um, not completely free, but at this point with these levels, uh, pretty easy fight. I think Hippos is going to be in a little bit better spot than Kobahi uh, because he did a little bit more leveling. Uh, yeah, he's in his mid teens right now, is what I saw from Kobahi's screen. So it'll be kind of an interesting fight for Kobahi. It'll, it'll be rough. I know. Uh, Optimum, depending on his location, can hit like a tank. How about uh, key item-wise, these runners, basically, except for Supremacy not having Darkness, basically being on the same page at this point, either doing the pass or whatever's here? This is really, really anybody's race still. Yeah, absolutely. And I don't... How, how does Supremacy not have... Oh, he just hasn't done. He never went to get Edward. He avoided Edward. Well, he's not going to get paid off by that. <laughs> he's got three characters, and if he does that, <laughs> guess who he's getting? Womp womp. Nobody expects the Edward Inquisition. I want to know, more importantly, why is it that Edward is always the Duke character? Like, why can't we see some Duke foos? Because trolls? Because Ooh. Scholar Kitty rolled the seat, that's why. <laughs> okay. And we've got the hook out of Earth Crystal, so doesn't I mean, open up any key items yet, but does give you a free character. Can give you a shop, although I don't think they need anything from the shop at this point. Yeah, at this point in time, that hook is probably more disappointing than anything. You'd be more excited if you had the rat tail or pink tail. In fact, if you end up finding those, you might dip around and, and go at that point in time. But yeah, that hook, you're probably going, oh, that was a bad idea. Well, you wanted the free characters, so you got you got the three out of ten. Or you got Edward, you got a hook. Congratulations. I must say, though, I'm really surprised, given how early this seat opened up, that nobody has done Dwarf Castle yet at 40 minutes in. Dwarf Castle is kind of interesting because it's a huge time investment to even check to see what kind of boss is going to be there. And then you're like, uh, first boss is all right. And then the second boss turns out to be something like Wyvern. And you feel like you've wasted, you know, almost 10 minutes getting to that point. Well, the second boss is only has 3000 HP. So it's actually going to Grinding. Some more grinding. Gotta get pour him some levels, I suppose. Checks out. Seems seems fine to me. Kobahi getting his pour him and Edward. Um, Big Dunka finding a Soma drop. I don't think anyone else picked that one up, did they? I don't. I don't think so. No. These Lunars hidden on Supremacy for some pretty good damage. Kind of in a danger zone here. This is this is kind of a dangerous spot for Supremacy. You mean like it's a, a highway to a 
a danger zone? I mean, exactly that, yes. Oh, yeah. And Yang not doing a whole lot of damage here either. This is this is interesting. Yeah, Supremacy's in kind of a rough spot right now. Kabaki's in pretty good. Yeah. Touched it out. Meanwhile, on Hippo's side, uh, Palum or Porum just won Cure 3, so doing very well on levels right now. Genius asks, uh, what version of FF4 is, uh, FF6 is, this, this is an FF6, it's FF4, but it is a uh, Final Fantasy IV free enterprise randomizer. Uh, we use the Final Fantasy IV Japanese version as our base and then randomize it. My favorite versions of FF6 are the FF4 versions, actually. So I've got Hippos continuing this grind. Um, he doesn't have 10 Kian yet, so this is kind of an interesting play. I wonder what he's building up to. If he's going to do, go moon hunting, if he's going, if he just feels that he needs these levels bad enough to take on Dwarf Castle, or or what the end game is there. Uh, Kobahi has his hook now, so Kobahi going going to follow underground as well. Supremacy, getting his Edward finally. The moment I've been waiting for for so long. <laughs> Just everyone, you're like, you must have Edward. There's no getting around it. Oh, and there's the Bahamut in the back of Dwarf Castle right now, as Kobahi shows us. Bahamut, by the way, is completely free in these. If you have the, the Star Veils or Moon Veils, yes. Which are guaranteed on Overworld, so logically speaking, if you can check item shops, this is a free fight. So, got ignored for a long time. I'm very curious to see what's here. This could be this could be pretty big for Kabahi. He's not walling up. He's just doing all the damage right now. Edward with some nice hiding. Very good, very good. I like it. <laughs> I mean, yeah, sure. That's some top notch hiding, boy. Supremacy has Octobam down, about to get his hook. Uh, Dunka has has a frog, and did not reflect that uh, status onto the D Lunars, so he's in kind of a rough spot here. Uh, lunar frogs, not a thing. No. Is Hippo's making the play for the moon now? Interesting. Oh, he's he's making the call. That's a spicy play right there. Meanwhile, Kobahi is going to find out our second boss is oh another free Baron Guards boss. And Tella, <laughs> the guy who is not Edward. <laughs> I mean. I, I hate Tella. I'm just going to say it. I hate Tella. But since he's already done ordeals, I guess he's serviceable. Imagine hating Tella. That, you're, you're a monster. <laughs> Tella is the Final Fantasy equivalent of Star-Lord in my mind. Are we going to have value at Cape Bahamut? That's the question. Ooh, Hippo's there's, going right there. Hippo's making the dive. Supremacy about to get his darkness crystal as well. And Owen at uh, K Bahamut. Ew, that that looks that looks rough. Not the freest fight in the world, but doable. Doable, I think, uh, unless Rydia gets one shot like that. 
Well, the good news is there's not a lot of uh, not a lot of damage going to be put up, put up by that by Odin's Odin attack in the spot. The magic uh, attack of this spot is pretty low because normally there's mega nuke here, but you gotta live that long, so gotta actually live it. And we only saw the legend sword in Dwarf Castle. It looks like feels bad, man. <laughs> I mean, at this point, it's another key item, and we've gotten quite a few key items. I think we had the white robe and the ribbon and the defense sword. We haven't seen a whole lot of not key items here, which is good and bad. I mean, we're getting closer to that 10 key item spot. Yeah, we are at uh, eight for Kobahi, it looks like. Oh, oh yeah. Hippos was able to survive that Odin hit like a champ. And he also pulled up uh, a blink on Cecil so that he could dodge a couple of attacks here and use Cecil's natural cover ability. So that's that's a really nice, uh, convenient play for him in these circumstances. It's a very, uh, very nuanced move, I should say. It's a very skillful play. It's definitely heads up on the game. Absolutely. It looks like we've got Kobahi looking at these land a son of a monster. Well, uh, Dark Elf isn't horrible at that spot. I think it's at the Leviathan spot, and that has a relatively low magic attack spot. Plus, you can stop him once he gets into the dragon phase. So, it's not horrible. You just have to survive to that point. Yeah, he's not too bad. I'm, I, I really wonder what the other boss is, though. Because if it's like Plague or something... Where you could, you know, play play it off of a Sarbell pretty easily. Could have, could have seen somebody charge that earlier. And Hippos does not find value in Cape Bahama. Death. Death is uh, not quite as valuable as actual value, it turns out. He was hoping for cake, and instead he found death. Cake or death. All right, so while that's going on, we got Kobahi taking on the Dark Elf. He's got a piggy Dridia. The worst case scenario for this fight is to Dark Elf with to piggy. But uh, he's got plenty of fighters. I think this probably should be an okay fight for him. Yeah, this, this looks like it's going to be pretty decent for him. Hippos is giving another shot at Odin. And... Guards are over here on Supremacy. Dunka, where's Dunka at? I forget where Dunka's at at this point. He's about to get that hook. Hook, hook, where's the hook? Hook, hook, where's the hook? Got that, that good hook reference. You know, from the wonderful mid-90s movie starring Robin Williams. It's very topical, yes. I think so, yeah. If Hippos had a Thunderclaw, that would But he's kind of working against, uh, working upstream, so, so to speak, in that he's got a lot of damage to avoid here. He doesn't have a real big weapon. His best uh, attack right now is Virus. And we see Dunka heading to the moon as well. Seems like a good call at this point for Dunka. Uh, I don't know what his level... I don't think I've actually seen Dunka go level yet. And, like, he's not done any grinding. He might be looking to grind there. He might be trying to find some goldies. And there's Odin Odining again. I mean, Odin's gonna Odin... So, so, Hippos put the barrier status on Yang with the Moon Veil, it looks like, but uh, that Odin attack actually gets past the uh, Moon Veil. So that was death number two. At this point, you can only hit your head against that wall so many times before you have to make some hard decisions. 
And yeah, it looks like he's leaving. Gonna say, maybe I'll come back after I level some more. Yeah, the funny thing is he has Ice 3 for radius, so he's not that far away from Lit 3, and Lit 3 does a lot of damage against Odin. So like it's it's he's like right on that line, but you can kind of see the um experience coming into play here. Meanwhile, Kabaki's still on this uh uh wonderful uh, dark elf fight, but he's in the dragon phase, so and he's using an hourglass. If he can survive that long, oh, poor him, just took it to the face. Tell the hero with the hourglass. And 2249 in the face. Hey, it's done, though. He stopped. All he has to do is get everyone up, and then the rest of this is done. It just is going to take a while. So the interesting thing is he wants to use weak with Tella, but uh, he's got to heal Tella first. I don't know if he has a heal potion or not. You may have to use Piggy with Pridia <laughs> to try to, to heal Tella for this. <laughs> oh, and that's Ogopogo at the other spot. And we have our first D-Mist sighting at the, I believe that's the Murasame spot. Is this the Vanilla Pelodem spot? Yes. Yes. Interesting find. Oh no, oh no. He's zerking. Why? Oh. He was trying to Zerk. So um, Hippo's maybe running into the fact that Cecil with Crystal Mail cannot be Berserked. It's one of the very few items where uh, that actually presents, prevents Berserk from happening. And so he may inadvertently have that on and not know that uh, that's a thing. Yeah, but that's this isn't a fight you want to Zerk anyone on. And uh, the actual thing from the Dark Elf in the Underworld. So that was a gigantic waste of time. So this fight for Hippos is very winnable. He just needs to blink and it's just going to be slow. Um, meanwhile, Supremacy also heading for Dark Elf now and Big Dunka looking for that value at an even lower level. So mm, this, could be, this could be something that he nopes out of immediately. Yeah, we'll take a look. He's also looting the treasure chest, which tells you he's probably not fully confident in his party's equipment as of right now. Um, I hope he sees Odin and says, nah, nah, I'm going to exit. But you never know. And so we've got, uh, you said that there was Ogopogo at that other spot, the Ashura spot? All right, Ogopogo, which is going to be a super rough spot because that is a high speed spot. That's going to push people to the moon for sure. Um I haven't seen anybody do top of tower yet, have we? No, we have not. That would be an interesting play. I think Hippos probably feels pretty good about where he is right now in this fight, just given that uh, even though the Mist Dragon's going to take forever, he's going to get uh, two chances at a key item out of it. So he's probably oh. committed at this point. Big Dunka is getting smacked around by Odin right now. Odin is literally telling Big Duncan to go level, and he's not listening. Uh, he's, trying he's... To, he's trying to pull the little one strat. <laughs> so there's a rare thing in Odin's script where uh, any lightning item, uh, spell, whatever, can actually kill him instantly, but it only happens on the third sword raise. You have to survive long enough to get there, and uh, yeah, he... He did not survive long enough to get there. So we got Kobahi on his way into the into the sub. Right, Hippo's doing Dynamist. Supremacy just claimed his Morazame, so I don't know if he's actually if he's actually seen. Yeah, he probably has seen that. That's Pogo Pogo. He's exiting out. I'm not sure what Duck is going to do at this point. Looks like grind. He's got some sirens. Yeah, that'll be yeah, helpful. That's a good spot because at this point, the only thing Dunk is really missing is levels at this point. Um, otherwise, a lot of the options he's done. Seem to be pretty good. Supremacy looks like he's going to be the first one to climb the tower. 
I like that play. Little pig running down. Of course, when I like plays, they tend to end in people getting trolled, so we'll see. Um, Hippos is finding out quickly that his best weapon against Rydia's mom is Rydia with Virus. <laughs> Well, I should yeah. say, I, I, I shouldn't say quickly. I should say he's finding out very slowly <laughs> that hey, the he's best weapon he's got is virus. Yeah. <laughs> it just keeps. <laughs> oh. Uh, Rydia's mom just does not want to keep Rydia alive for some reason. So we got Bacon at the top of the tower here. Bacon is actually kind of a mean boss in these. In, and especially in a spot here uh, cast opponent. This is kind of a tough battle. Yeah. Uh, Bacon is no joke. He can hit like a truck. His arms can hit like a truck. And he's got none. He's he's really has the only spell he has that uh, I don't know if he actually has access to it. The only spell he has that would uh, multi-target past this wall would be if Tella had that Soma drop for Medio. <laughs> so well, it's going to be pretty slow. I mean, Rydia can at least use like Titan and things like that to get past the wall if she really wants to. Yeah, that's a good point. Often forgotten that Rydia does su summon. So that is on the table. We've got Kobahi diving deep into the subterrain here. He might be grinding, or he might be trying to find that uh, double chest spot to try to get the 10 key items. I have a bad joke, but I don't necessarily want to make it right now. Oh, he's, uh, he's sirening up here. He's going to do some King Ryu grind. Yeah, with Tella uh, being able to cast weak here, this is actually not a bad point. Uh, the King Ryu's are vulnerable to weak, so if you hit them with it, uh, Tella can be hit or miss when he's not in the middle, as he is here. Um, then just one hit will knock them down, and you can life glitch them for extra experience. Yeah, that's pretty good. And I did not see uh, life staff at miss. Okay, so that's best in slot for Pora. Okay. Yeah, that life staff is a total game changer. Such a game changer that Hippos does not check the miss dragon spot immediately. He's going right down. Here we go to the lunar subterrain. Lunar subterrain. Lunar subterrain. So supremacy, he does this fight and it actually crystal in raid position. Um, he's kind of caught up a little. He kind of fell behind early. I feel like Dunka is probably the lowest on the totem pole right now, especially after those Odin fights. Or sorry, the the one Odin fight. Hippos had a bigger lead and now. It seems like he's kind of more kind of neck and neck with Kobahi. Really, it's still just a race tool at this point. I think Supremacy is kind of on a different path. So if he ends up finding the chain where he's at and avoiding the moon up to this point in time, I think he's going to be in a good spot. He's committed to his gamble, though. Finds the Baron key top of the tower that, that could be it That's that a... could be it it's a very interesting item at this point point of the game hippo's curing up oh, he's got he's at low, low 40s all around looks like so is he gonna grind some more yeah that looks like the play Obahi and hippos both are gonna be in in grind town right now on these king reuse 
so for the moment, not showing us really anything interesting that we haven't seen already. Um, Supremacy will have the Baron key in hand and probably makes the next check that really impacts um, the chain, so to speak. Yeah, I mean, I, this is... Hmm. I mean, both Hippos and Kobahi are doing their grinds. They're committed to being up here on the moon, and if it's the crystal, they just go right on in. Supremacy is doing his gamble. It's really unfortunate that Big Dunk, it just seems to be kind of on the same path that Hippos and Kobahi are, but just a little bit further behind, unfortunately. So Supremacy playing right to Baron. Instant play for um, I forgot. I already forgot. Also, was the beginning of the game. But, uh, at this point, he his he's leveled enough to where it shouldn't matter too much. No, I don't think it will. It'll be interesting to see who he ends up finding here at the Baron spot that Sid is normally in. Yeah, he's not even opening any chests. He's fine with his equipment right now. Um, the only people I can see him. I mean, he's only got two frontline fighters and three mages. So I can see him if he finds like a duplicate cane or a duplicate edge. Um, well, there won't be a duplicate. We've seen Edward twice. Oh, that's right. That's right. So we know it's not edge. We know it's not cane. It may be uh, Fu. It could be Palum. Uh, it could be Rosa. So, so it's absolutely a mage of some sort. Well, story checks out. I'm sure I'm forgetting something, though, and chat will quickly correct us. Either way. Oh, um, Sid. It could be Sid, yeah. It could be Sid, yes. There you go. So we had the the Ruby Cant here. Uh, pretty much a free fight at this stage of the game, if, as long as you have any kind of ice equipment. I mean, so overleveled for this that... Young even gets an attack in before he opens his room for the first time, which is just crazy. So Dunka is going to go to the boon, going going to dive sub train here. Everybody's got some levels. Um, Hippos trying to get a couple more as well. Of Skubahi and Supremacy about to find out who is the King of Baron today. I'm really interested that, I mean, looks like it's a lunar boss fight, but he did this before doing the uh, the Odin spot. We have a pale tip. Well, you've got to do this before the, the Odin spot, both for the character if you want to get rid of Tella, and then also um, to save, unless you want to go run all the way back. If Odin spot becomes a pain. I mean, at this point, we still have, what, Wyvern on the board, right? So, I mean, yeah. that, there could be a number of things there. It could be too tough to handle. Wyvern's on the board, and Golbez is still on the board as far as Supremacy knows. Now, we know that Golbez is actually at the Rubicon location. So, but as far as Supremacy knows, that's still out there and could be wandering about. So I can absolutely see his rationale here. And Pale Dim just doesn't hold much weight there. So Kabahi making the play for the two chests now. We have three wimpy dark imps. Well, they're not wimpy. They're going to do a lot of damage on their one turn. They will yeah. soon die. <laughs> so that is always nice to see when you when you dive moon. You get a nice free boss with a lot of experience points attached. And some instant death spells can kick these guys to the curb quickly. And hey, did you know, you know, once Tella evolves into his final form, he becomes a Fusoya. They found that mop in the basement. Look at them. For Supremacy. That'll make him feel pretty bold. I'm sure at this point, having pretty much the easiest character to fight with in the game. Uh, in this kind of seed, because you fight so many bosses anyway. Has got to make him want to play this all the way, unless it's crystal right here. It's a Luca key. Oh man, you got to think. I mean, he might check the Baron spot. No, he's gonna uh, he's gonna follow that. 
he, he doesn't, or no, he's not. Quite, doesn't quite know what he wants to do yet. <laughs> so Big Will Ducka has be? Big Ducka has the Mist Dragon also queued up in, in, in another fight that's going to take a long time. Hippo's still grinding. We're about to find out what Kobahi is going to get here. This is a big couple of chests. Especially if it gets him to 10 key items. Yeah, Supremacy is the first with 10 key items, I believe. Crystal ring and adamant. Well, he did find a crystal. Well, it wasn't the one he wanted, but it is a crystal. I mean, it's still the best ring in the game, so I'll take it. It's a really nice ring to have, yeah. Supremacy heading for that Odin spot. We are going to find Leviathan. That's not bad. That's, That's a not horrible. For, for where he is level, this is actually a pretty, pretty nice fight to find. Uh, Leviathan only does Ice 2 and Big Wave. He alternates between the two of them. And has a big lightning weakness. And as Sir Memphis is going to show you, he also can uh, have all those Ice 2s reflected right back at him. So... Should not be that hard of a fight, given where he is level-wise. In fact, I'm surprised he has any Fu just like going all out. Well, I think he was checking what spells Fu has. Oh no, he's it's 1900. He's got all his spells. So Kobahi fighting Plague now. A, uh, act I, I believe an actual vanilla Plague. Yeah, um, and he did kill off Purim and is bringing her back to life, doing the doing the trick here to double the amount of time you know if they had just kept edward <laughs> no this is this is this is okay things will go oh, things will go pretty okay kane did end up dying there that actually might be good for for uh, kobahi yeah so we can get another round in here the damage is actually pretty low uh Yang is not doing a whole lot of damage. And he's having to fight off Porum over and over again. You can Star Veil uh, count onto Plague. And in some cases, that is superior play. So Leviathan goes down. I gotta wonder if Hippos is done grinding. He's been grinding for a while now up there. Dunk is still on Demist as well. Only finds a package for his troubles. Well, that's where they stored it, folks. I mean... Had to get to miss somehow. Hey, I mean, he's still got a, a chain that he can follow. He can still do Lukaki. So the chain is not dead. That was what, his 7, 8, 9? That was 11th count. I'm surprised he didn't reset out of that. Especially knowing that Fu is there. And I'm guessing he probably knows that Edge is at Sand Ruby too. Um... Um, I believe Hippos is actually going for a nuke at this point, right? Like, he's pretty close. He's got to be. I mean, in, in both Rydia and Porum, and this is unfortunate about this particular party, Rydia and Porum are the two worst viable... Okay, I'm, they are among the worst HP scaling characters to viably use in the endgame, other than Dark Knight Cecil and Edward. I don't mind he's done grinding. Uh, Kobahi gets the pink tail for his plague troubles. So we've got uh, whatever the Demist reward is. We've got Cave Leviathan. We've got Ogo Pogo at Ashura Spot. We've got the Luka Key. Um, we've got the vanilla Ogo Pogo Spot. Worth noting, Hippo turned in that uh, Mist Dragon yet, so he's probably going to be checking Masamune Spot and the Crystal Sword Spot before too long. And Kobahi's going to give us a check at the vanilla Ogopoko spot. While well, Supremacy rides the ropes over here and uh, figures out what's in the sealed cave. Yeah, this will be really interesting. Supremacy has... I really like what Supremacy is doing. He is committing to his gambles, and it's just... Whatever happens, happens at this point in time. He, it could be horrible for him if it ends up being on the moon. It could be great for him if this is where it ends up being. So it's feast or famine for Supremacy's style of play here. And Kobahi finds a very, very 
except Water Hag will brutalize and kill uh, probably three party members. But other than that, totally free. Big Dunk, I feel like, has been fighting D Mist now for like 10 minutes. Am I wrong? This, is, this has been a long a, fight. This has been a long fight. You gotta wonder if Big Dunka, after this long of a fight, thinks that he's got to full commit to it and like just immediately go well, and turn it in. Well, look what we found on the moon, folks. Oh man, it's the dream. Did, did, did Scholar roll the seed? Did that happen? Did she, she, yeah, put a free, I, she put a free crystal out there. They know, right? Meanwhile, Supremacy finds the Masamune and he's going to see Dark Knight and immediately reset and go, nope, I made a horrible, horrible mistake. So things are looking pretty good for Kobahi as far as winning this race at this point. He's got um, 10 key items to grind with if he wants to do a little more. He's got the crystal, which nobody else has, although hippos might be in the area pretty soon. And, I mean, let's face it, it's, he's the odds on favor to, to take this race now, and he's already pretty leveled anyway, so. Yeah, and worth noting, again, Kobahi has two first-place finishes in his two races, so he's in a, a position right now to go three for three. Uh, that's amazing. I'm just, like, stuttering here because uh, no one else is in that position right now. I don't think anyone else has more than two first place win. So if Kobahi does this, he's in a commanding lead in the overall points for the league. Dipwood has three also, yes. Oh, but uh, yeah. but uh, still very, very respectable. And if he does get to 12 points, you know, obviously he's an instant favorite for a top four spot. Um, Hippos and Big Dunka both really need these points as well. So that's pretty huge for them. Even if Hippos can wrangle a second, it's a big deal. Um, supremacy is going to do, going to grind now. These and it's going to be unfortunate for him where the crystal location is. He just kind of picked the wrong path to go down. And yes, we've got a uh, a demist uh, adamant. Always oh, nice to find a great item. However, not what Big Dunko was hoping to find. Probably after spending. Roughly 10 minutes on that fight. Yeah, I don't know if the Adamant Armor will save you 10 minutes aggregate in your remaining fights. So uh, that's unfortunate. Supremacy now looks like going to uh, he's full committing to staying here on the Earth, going down into the uh, summon monster fights. Yeah, he already did Dark Elf, so he only has to take out uh, Ogopogo now. And he's got the characters to do it, but it's just going to be disappointing for him. Which is too bad. So Hippo's taking care of these dark imps now. Um, does Rydia have fatal at this point? She might. She might. She might not. She she should, I believe. Just letting the attackers do the work here. A lot of berserks. Um, so Kobahi doesn't have what you would call like a great weapon inventory besides Defense Sword, um, but he should feel pretty comfortable with these fights at this point. And he, well, he's, he's, level, he's leveled Cecil to where the Dwarf Axe will be uh, Agility 28, which is something that most runners look for, so... Well, I, I think he has a rune axe on Kane as well, if I remember seeing that right, because we saw a rune axe in Troya. So they're not horrible. I mean, Young doesn't have the world's greatest weapons, but you're mostly only leveling him for very, very specific reasons. And, and you know, his attack scales at that point. So I think you're in a good spot. One of my, one of my least favorite things about these seeds is when you just look back at all this edge gear that you'll never equip that has been sitting in your inventory for so, the entire game. So much edge gear. <laughs> so Kabahi making his run to Zero Miss now. 
uh, Hippos went the wrong way, <laughs> did not go to the Ogopogo boss. So we're going to find out a, a new boss here, but we are not going to see him get the crystal. Big Dunka working on Vanilla Plague and Supremacy full clear on the overworld. So Kobahi is getting ready to approach Zeromus, and it's everyone's favorite part of this randomizer. Um, a lot of our community has done a ton of work in making sure that the Zeromus true colors are something a little bit special for us. Or as Scott would say, whose butt are we going to kick today? So yeah, with poor Mantella, Kobahi definitely going for a Berserk-centric approach to this fight. It's definitely the easiest way to do it. Um, Porum's HP is a little troubling, but not terrible. So, shouldn't be too bad. Alright, so here's the crystal. Drum roll. Whatever your guess is in in chat, I, I love seeing these guesses. Two hundred and fifty plus sprites to pick up from, and we've got Birdo for you. Birdomus, everyone's favorite cross dresser. Everyone's favorite, whatever, whatever it is thing. <laughs> so Kabaki taking a little slow there on purpose. He wanted to uh, make sure that Cecil retained the defense sword powers before berserking him, which is. A pretty decent move, in my opinion. Um, Yang getting nuked there is wonderful. So he is set up pretty well for the early part of the fight. Yep. Supremacy has finally, finally hit the moon. I think he knows at this point. He goes, I made the wrong gamble, which is, which is fine. I mean, Rando's going to Rando every now and then. No one is going to have a perfect record here. Well, except for, except for maybe Kabai. <laughs> Other than that, though. Hippos is uh, turning in the rat tail that he got from that uh, the Noah Wyvern spot. And probably going to be disappointed with it as well. Yes, Crystal was on the Ogopogo spot, so it's a long way down. Really, I feel like at this point in time that the Crystal has been at the Ogopogo spot so much. I feel like I need to make that my first priority check on the moon. I wholeheartedly endorse this, and I'm sure you will never run into a powerful uh, enemy there. No, never. Especially, <laughs> like, tomorrow. I should absolutely go there first thing. Sure, why not? It'll be great. And I'll look stupid when it's when it actually is the crystal, so everybody wins. Hippos found something. Looks like the tower key that Hippos found. Oh no. Oh no. Just what you want to see. <laughs> I'm sure it will lead to many happy matches. Uh, Big Dunka having a lot of problems with the plague fight. He has never really got love in this run, and that has been holding him back for a while. Uh, Supremacy about to make his uh, cane, uh, grind his cane up to a more respectable level, looks like. And Tella down for Kobahi, not a big deal. Almost oh, expected to happen at that point, right? I mean, if Tella's most effective thing that he can do is take a nap at this boss anyway, so. Look, he can cast Ice 3 and do like 2,000 damage, man. That's 2,000 more damage than um, you can do? I don't know. I'm, he's not very effective, but <laughs> I liked where I was going with it for a little bit. I know, it, it was, uh, anyway. 
I, yeah. I don't want to. I just don't want to cast anything. Like cast times in this game can be so long. It feels like you need to do something super effective if you're going to cast anything. So Kobahi right now is basically in a mode where we're hoping for no evil big bangs. Uh, Porum only has 1898 HP as you see, and I have never cursed anybody in my life, but. I believe I just did it for the first time. So he's going to have to play recovery here. Uh, I believe Birdomus is in nuke phase already, so they'll probably see that pretty soon. Yep. Uh, it's actually not that big of a deal once you actually get to this phase, because usually poor will recover in time to cure four. It's just more time loss and annoyance than anything. Oh, he's even bringing Tella up. Another nuke target, maybe. Well, he's only got, uh, he only brought three Bacchus one. He needs somebody to actually cast the spell. Oh, okay, that makes some sense and you thought tella was useless i'm not saying useless i'm saying not <laughs> you're terribly saying, <laughs> you're saying he has limited uses well there's this, the shake this is a very edge case scenario for for usefulness for tella we'll put it that way so the one thing that you're worried about when you get to this point in the fight is running out of mp Porm is in a pretty good spot right now, and Cecil can survive any Big Bang. It's just a matter of how many times he can keep doing this. Hey, Porm survived another Big Bang. I mean, that's that's nice. On Supremacy screen, you may have seen Kane gain like 50 levels there. <laughs> so, okay. Well, he has Yang back up. He's still looking for, like, an actual spot where he can cast Berserk. That's the main sticky sticky problem at this point. Oh, um, and it's a nuke on Porum and a Big Bang. Oh, no. Well, she'll be back down, but that's not the end of the world. Well, no, she won't be back down, actually. Look at that. Yeah, it was a nerf Big Bang because it was a nuke counter that so that's that's an amazing lucky play there i don't know about lucky but it was definitely measured <laughs> so kobahi now is going to have to find a way to berserk people or just deal with like the slowest end game to this fight ever or we could find media right now hey i'm down with media phase right now that's his final phase we're almost there just keep holding a Hold A and pray, baby. Hold A and pray. A and pray. I'm, I'm fine with that. That is the uh, official FF4 runner's mantra. Oh, Dunk is on his way over here to the Masamune fight. This is great news for Donka, and having six points, and this is uh, he has two uh, races left. This one and one more. Uh, he needs all the points he can get, so this is a good spot for him to be in. Is that Thunder? Yes, that's Thunder in my background. Actually, it's Yermus. So, GG to Kobahi, taking it down on stream with an official SRL time of 1.2606. So that is three. 12 points. Yeah, three of three. So the last race for Kobahi later on uh, this month. Pulling up the schedule here. Kobahi is going to be a uh, Kobahi versus Kirchin versus uh, Aizen Tayama and uh, Rivers McCown on August 28th at 9 p.m. right here on RPG Limit Break. Can Kobahi go four of four? Rivers, you're still in the undefeated ranks right now as well, aren't you? Is that true? I guess that could be true. I mean, you've had one race so far. That actually is true. <laughs> <laughs> 
So you're technically undefeated, but with only one race, and then you're going to beat me, me tomorrow. So, you know, that's that's something. I always say it's never good when you beat yourself before the race started, but as long as you're happy with that. <laughs> oh, so Big Dunk, it gets his crystal and is now going to be doing some quick levels up right now. Uh, GG Kobahi, we'll see if we can't get him in here to chat for a bit. <laughs> Supremacy going for the value in Cave Bahamut. Uh, nobody has actually completed this Odin fight yet. Um, who could be here, actually? Maybe the Sand Ruby? The Spoon could be alive still? Yeah, Sand Ruby and Spoon, but we are joined now by our champion, Kobahi. GG, sir. Thank you. So, Tight Zero must fight, huh? I that was scary. I thought Porum would be a lot better with a white robe ribbon and a uh, diamond bangle on, but you know. 1898, man. Not easy. No, luckily I clutched it out there, so I'm, I'm just glad I didn't have to do the fight over again. Yeah, you actually have a pretty good lead on everybody else. You probably could have attempted it again and still won. Uh, that was a pretty funny crystal location, given how free it was, huh? Yeah, I mean, I went to the moon. Normally I don't go to the moon early, but I pretty much had nothing to do. Got in Tella and knew I could just grind on the Wii's and then fight some bosses, and yeah, it just ended up being there. So tell me a little bit about your strategy when you open it up and you saw Magna Key to start off with, and then turns out the Dark Crystal was right next door in Baron Inn. You know, this was a pretty open scene from the get-go. What was your thinking as you're going through it all? Uh, well, first off, I, I was looking for a way to even kill a couple bosses or find sirens or something because with Dark Knight Cecil and Yang, your early game damage is actually not great at all. So I did like the opening looting, did the first couple like spots, the Antlion Cave, uh, got, I can't even remember who was on the mountain anymore, Gridia and Fabul, and then found sirens with the coffins I had and immediately went down to just do some to get some levels, which opened up so much to do. Yeah, this seed was very wide open from the beginning, especially fighting. So you never had a shortage of things. No, definitely didn't. Was there any point in time where you felt like you were ahead or behind or, or you hit a spot where you're like, oh, this this is it? Uh, with with how you said it, it was so open, it was it, it's so hard to tell. Like there was so many different directions to go that anyone could be at any point. So I just knew I needed to find the crystal and beat Zerobus as fast as I could. Did you feel like you had to to push Zerobus a little bit earlier than you normally would have because of how open it was? Um, no. Like I thought my levels were fine. Like I did a couple extra uh, uh, reviews to get. Cecil to that 33 agility because I knew I had a dwarf axe, but I also wanted to go to those higher levels because you know, I didn't have the greatest equipment. Like, I could have gone back to Earth for an Excalibur and an Adamant armor, but I didn't feel like taking the time. So we've got Dunka grinding on. Well, Hippo Zach. Uh, Mom Bomb at that vanilla wyvern spot. Uh, Kobahi, so. 12 points in three matches. Um, I, uh, make us no math, but that sounds pretty good. What, what are you thinking about that? Uh, honestly, I'm happy that I won. Uh, anyone could have taken these races, but it looks like I'm probably going to be in top 12, I think, already without my last race. But I just got to see if I can get top four and get to some of those draft spots, apparently. Not only are you likely to be top four, I mean, or top 12, but it's looking like, you know, you could easily run the table here and make us all look like fools. I'm just, just going to say that. Yeah, well, I still have one race left and, you know, one of the commentators here might be in it. It could be a hard race. Who, me? I'm washed up. It's okay. You're, you're totally fine. 
Yeah, the only three seeds I've run in the past bit were these three races. I haven't played anything in between. I haven't had time. It should be a really good race, though. Uh, Kirchen is really a really talented player. He's done a lot of uh, low-level manipulation kind of stuff, so he's pretty good. Uh, Aizen Tayama, um, although not a great showing last last race that they did, also looking really good. So I'm really excited to do that race. No, it's definitely going to be good. And I mean, like, no matter who in this top 32, we're all good runners and we all know what we're doing. So anything can happen. Yeah, that's that's kind of the theme of this round. For sure. you have any uh, kind of final thoughts on the seed, any you want to bring up besides uh, your next match? Uh, not really. I mean, it's a pretty straightforward, open pass. Just kind of had to pick your poison and see if you got lucky, like I did with fighting the crystal first, I guess. All right. Well, thank you for your time, Kabahi, and uh, congratulations again. Uh, Three wins is nothing to sneeze at, and got a very good chance of making my top four now. Thanks, I'll get out of your hair. Yeah. All right, everyone, that was Kobahi. If you like what you saw from him today, go ahead, give him a follow here on Twitch. He is, he's going to make some noise here in the next round. I mean, he's hes for sure in the next round, so that it'll be exciting to watch as this tournament progresses. Meanwhile, it seems like Big Dunka is finished with his grind. He is going to save up and head for Z-Man himself. Uh, Supremacy is slowly working his way through, and Hippos, I think, has is, is dove down a rabbit hole now. Yeah, Supremacy is only one thing. The, uh, the Ogo spot is next door, and he's got a free fight here, so... We could actually see him pull this out, just given levels right now, if he trusts in Fu. Um, Big Dunka is actually going back to grind a little bit more, so... Second place still kind of up for grabs here. I feel like Hippos is pretty far behind, but uh, Big Dunka and Supremacy both duking it out here. Yeah, um... Interesting with Dunka here. You know, I thought he was finished up. He was in kind of the mid-50s. Or early to mid 50s but you know i can looking at his hp i could absolutely see him being a little bit nervous uh, we did see for example you know how kabahi struggled a little bit there with form with even more hp than big duncan has right now so uh, probably grinding up to be a little bit more comfortable there hippos is in a rough spot right now let's see where does supremacy decide to go he's going to find his vanilla plague yeah, uh, when you have a seat, are kind of the main available uh, mages. It does make uh, HP management a lot harder than it would normally. So, overgrinds are pretty common, um, and I can see Dunka definitely taking some extra time here. Probably not even comfortable where he is right now to be honest, but he do, he does have Nuke, he does have uh, Cure 4 and White, he does have the Admin Armor for Quorum, so that's a big plus. Probably going to go after this. You know, Supremacy picked the wrong enemy to fight down here. Um, we're looking for the Vanilla Ogo spot, however, should be able to survive this fight at the very least. Uh, nothing too bad going on. Hippos, meanwhile, has found the Baron Key. It's going down the rabbit hole. And other than finding Fu, is not going to ha be happy with the end of it. Probably not. Um, Supremacy trying to get through here with Plague. We'll see if anyone dies. Uncle Mop takes a death. <laughs> Everyone but none dies. Oh, God. So Dunka on his way to zero us now. He is done with his grind. Hippos diving down this rabbit hole. I, you know what? I thought he had dodged it, but uh, I mean, supremacy should be happy that he's not the only one to fall into this rabbit hole at the very least. Yeah, big Dunka heading to thing fight. You know, big Dunka coming over from LTTP. Doesn't have like a like a no sixty four runners 
Zemer's fight experience and with these low HP levels could get feisty. I don't know. This could be interesting. So Supremacy claims his pink tail. He's now, I believe, got most of the moon covered, except for the actual crystal spot and the tower key spot. Yeah, he's been kind of going down the progressive chain at this point in time. So he, he knows there's one spot left, and he has uh, otherwise done just about everything here. But he's, you know, if anything, Supremacy has shown me that he commits to his gambles. So once he's up on the moon now, he's going to commit to staying up here and going to that Ogopogo spot. All right, so Dunka, I wonder if we'll see some kind of hybrid strats here of Rydia with the nukes. Um, Kobahi didn't have that option. He got rid of Rydia. So interesting to see how he wants to take on Birdo Mess here. So he's setting up his crystal usage and getting his Bacchus wines. So if Supremacy runs right down after this fight, this because he will get the crystal after off one head on the head two times. And he's in great shape for his levels too. So I mean, he should be good to go. Yep, yep, yep. And more importantly, he has Fu, so he didn't have quite the HP worry that uh, Danka and Kobahi had to, had to play with here. So it gets the crystal. Be a short walk down. He'll probably do some menuing first, though. Um, <laughs> Hippo's trying to leave the castle with that. <laughs> Oops. Yeah, I can't, can't quite leave right in there. <laughs> I love that line, though. <laughs> I didn't... I missed it when it wasn't. Yeah, Supremacy ended up coming down, and he is doing a safety save, and on his way back down, we have another Big Bang here. Uh, he's still kind of in dicey territory for his Porum. Does have an Adamant armor equipped. Oh, 12. Okay, he's in good shape. Yeah, the Adamant will really make a big... It's not really... It's not It's not a dicey situation. I think that's kind of a wrong word that maybe I used. But uh, it is something that you still have to manage a little bit. And he's not doing a whole lot of damage. I think he's got a Blizzard Spear on Kane. So, kind of a slow fight, but should be okay. I guess it's just something you have to keep an eye on. Like, you can't... Like, if you see a big bed coming in and Yang's at full health, you're like, okay, yeah, whatever, it's going to happen. But you have to keep an eye on it, maybe hold your breath a little bit. Meanwhile, Supremacy is getting ready to start. He's got uh, a little bit different party setup. I mean, everyone's got Porum, but going in with a Fu instead of Iridia, otherwise identical party at that point. So where, at this point, where is the Sand Ruby? Uh, Tower? Yeah, it looks like tower key room, because we saw the credits. Right, right. Yeah, we weren't paying attention to that, but those chatters were. Those chatters. And so Dunka is in a pretty good spot here. Kane getting some jumps in. To stave off damage, since he's not going to... he Since, since Dunka is really not going to have the items to berserk everybody here. Yeah, and at this point you want to focus Porum on, I mean, Zerk when you can, otherwise you can heal up. And Porum's MP is just fine right now. You really don't have to worry about her MP in the final fight. Uh, 
Yeah, I have to admit, I was a little worried about Dunka's um, early Xeomas fight, only because Burtimus looked really fast. But I think he's got it under control now. It's just a matter of if uh, Supremacy can do anything to bop him. Like, he's got to... He's got to really, like, pull something out of the bag here. Hippo's on his way back to the Lunar Subterrane. Uh, it looks like he's got some more bosses he's got to fight. We'll eventually get to that crystal, unfortunately. We all know where it's at, and it's about the last place that Hippo's wanted it to be. So Supremacy definitely doing a little bit more. Probably not enough to catch up at the moment. Dunk will probably see a Meteo sometime in the next minute. Or sometime in the next 10 seconds, actually. Yeah, I mean, his Supremacy's fighters are doing work. He's got that Runax on Kane doing quite a bit more damage than Dunka was, but... Yeah, Meteo phase is just about GG for Big Dunka there. Oh, uh, gotta love the gotta love the Porum staff uh, wop there. That's a classic. Every bit of damage helps, and there's the flash. GG to Big Dunka finishes with an official SRL time of one forty three thirty seven, which it should be noted is a PB according to SRL. I I don't think that's a PB for Big Dunk himself in races, but as far as SRL is concerned, that is a PB, so GG, Big Dunka. So yeah, that's a huge uh, second place for Dunk. Uh, he'll be guaranteed 10 at least, so cut line right now for the uh, playoffs is looking like it's around 10 or maybe 9 with a high uh, tiebreaker, so very, very clutch win for Big Dunka. Or second place, I should say. <laughs> yep, yeah, he needed it, and he knows it too. Uh, he will be joining us before too long. Supremacy is getting real close here as well. And Hippos is about to get the crystal. Has a lot of levels now. <laughs> a lot of And here joining us now is Big Dunka. GG, sir. Thank you, uh, GG's. Big result for you, Dunka. How you feeling now? You know, I went into that saying second place, I need at least a second. And because that's going to put me in great shape going into tomorrow. So I'm totally thrilled with that. Yeah, that is a big result. Uh, guarantees you 10 points. Um, not that we know exactly where the line's going to land, but. Ten points probably should put you in the playoff. And some, yeah. in some eleven form. and twelve are going to be the numbers. So that's why this one was so huge. So what did you think of the seed? Um, my only question is, what was behind the Magus sisters? What did I abandon? You abandoned the pass. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, okay. Oh, that would have made. Oh man, I could have picked up Bacchus, and I would have picked up. Scalibur at that point. All right, I just I figured that was gonna take five minutes with the power that I had right there, so I just said screw it, I'm out. Yeah, you had some interesting fights in that vein, like heading over to Odin and gave Bahamut for a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I I, well, I went for the the Odin plan. There is that proc that happens when you can hit him with a lightning right when he's got a sword up, and it, I've had it happen once. So I was like, yeah, why not? We'll try it once, see what happens. So GG to Supremacy, who has just finished on stream with SRL time of 1.46.10. And we will get him in here ASAP. And Hippos has forfeited from the race. So that is the uh, conclusion of our race tonight, folks. How far behind is Hippos? He had just gotten the crystal. Oh, that's a bad spot. Water hag, and I've seen that there so many times at that uh, mass Indian spot. It's ridiculous. Yeah, it was it was such an interesting race, and it was so free from the beginning. Like Magma Key, Darkness Crystal, and the Baron End spot is just like here's the world to everyone. 
make your choice. Yeah, um, I love magma key starts because I always like cleaning out the underworld first and finding out what's available, uh, maybe finding additional items in the Fey Marsh and stuff like that. So I love that start. But then when we got back up, it was just, I, I actually actively went, as soon as I picked, uh, I got the pan, I'm like, you know, I'm going to do this now because I'm not going to do this again later. So I turned the pan in and then I got that Stardust. And I immediately went and got Rydia because that was going to be my offense for the first half an hour. That's right. You turned down Rydia originally. Yeah. yeah. I, at that point, it's one of those, you can go back and get her if you need to. I'm not going to put my time into that right now. It's not a huge deal because I didn't have anything for her. Like she had no weapons anyway. So it's not like I could give her anything. And then I got that Stardust and I'm like, boom, do it. And uh, yeah, that, that helped the early part of that so much. So we're also joined by Supremacy now. GG, sir. GG. Uh, GG, dude. So, Supremacy, what'd you think of that crystal spot? <laughs> uh, I think as soon as I saw Water Hag, I realized that's probably where it had to be because I think I don't think Kobahi would have done the uh, the Ogopogo spot that quickly. Or, sorry, the boss Ogopogo in the Ashura spot that quickly. Yeah, that was that was kind of a so, Premacy, you're going to finish our lead, uh, regular season with 12 points. So you should, you're should you going to be on level with uh, Inven and Swimmy right now. Probably going to be uh, in the top 12. How are you feeling about that? Uh, pretty good. Um, I mean, there's still, I think, some kind of stars that can align that put me into the plans, which I'm not thrilled about. So would have definitely preferred a first or second for kind of the guarantee, but... 12 is definitely pretty good, and it should definitely, it should hopefully be top 12. I won't have to go into the play-ins. And then, Dunka, your next race is tomorrow night, correct? Tomorrow night, yep. Uh, I believe I've got uh, Vitatia in that race. You have both of us in that race. <laughs> oh, you're both? Oh, you're referring to there too, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> yep. So, if you could just, you know, lose... <laughs> That'd be great. Be yeah. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll be... I'm pretty sure I'm casting that one tomorrow. I'll have to watch the restream and see which one of you cursed me the most. <laughs> we... There was... Okay, no, I think Rivers actually had a commentator's curse this race, so he's the only one who cursed anyone this race. And it was only Kobahi, and he won anyway, so... Well, let's not pretend it was a big deal, right? <laughs> yeah, I guess um, there's that. So am I the only one that kind of cleared everything except the Shura before going to the moon? Yep. Well, Hippos went up to the moon first and then came back down and kind of got trapped into that rabbit hole. So yeah, I mean, you, to your credit, I think you made the gamble and you followed through with it and just kind of kept on going with it and it just wasn't the right play, which Rando's going to Rando sometimes. Yeah, I, I was kind of miffed at myself early on it i didn't necessarily play as well as i would have hoped that i would have played i think i was just kind of rusty because i hadn't have played a, a whole lot in the past few weeks between watching league matches and helping to restream commentate everything else so i kind of wish i'd gotten a little bit more practice in but i think uh, i think i still did okay um definitely I was bummed to see the pan and antlion considering I'd already gone down to the underworld and talked to Yang. So I was like, oh, good. Now I have to double dip that. <laughs> yeah, that was that was a tough one. So this one's for both of you. You guys both started off with uh, not a lot of damage. Um, what are you guys thinking when, when you come out of these initial checks early on and you have Dark Knight Cecil, Yang, and Riddy of no spells? <laughs> I mean, it didn't necessarily worry me too much because with Underworld open, um, as, as soon as I found the Sirens anyway, I wish I had fully checked the Overworld shops before diving Underworld because finding the Sirens was like, oh yeah, I wish I would have checked this shop sooner. And then I was just like, okay, well, Radio's got a Stardust Rod. Let's get Virus really quick. And then that basically carried me up until I found Fu. Where was Fu at? Was he in uh, Elven Cave? Baron. Oh, I never went there. Okay, yeah. Yeah, there's there's a whole lot of uh, bupkis going on. Uh, 
I mean, it was it was still amazing to watch, kind of, because there wasn't a whole lot of damage, and even a lot of, you know, about halfway through the race, we didn't see a white mage until Porum there, and you know, I people were trying to dodge Edward in Baron Anne, and oops, you get a duplicate, Edward, deal with it. Yeah, I was I was a little bit worried and also relieved at the same time if that's possible when i got the darkness crystal from baron in because i was like i don't think anyone's doing edward here but then i figured maybe they probably did the same thing as i did but faster and we're like okay well let's check this location anyway you can't avoid edward he will chase you down he will infiltrate your party he will ruin your dreams hey man edward would have done work on that odin fight if i had needed him to <laughs> See, I was telling Batasia the whole time too. But uh yeah, so our next race um coming up tomorrow with three quarters of this booth <laughs> as well as uh Ginger Damas. So please come watch that tomorrow at uh seven Eastern. And we'll you guys got final any final thoughts? I just I'm looking forward to tomorrow. I'm thrilled where I'm at right now, and I just need to... I'm going to go eat some bacon cheeseburgers that my wife cooked about an hour ago, so I'm starving. Are they from Burger King? No, no, no. My wife makes them. They're they're fantastic. I, I'd share them, but that would be impossible. But he's not above teasing us with the things. They're really good. I know. <laughs> God. Yeah, I'm hungry, Duncan. Dang it. I'd like to shout out Scala Kitty for this wonderful seed. And also, I hate you, but I love you. Oh, yes. Yes. Thank you very much. Yeah. So, okay. Just a quick shout out again, once again, to our four runners Big Dunka, Hippos, Kobahi, and Supremacy. If you like what you saw from them, go ahead and give them a follow here on Twitch. Also, shout out to RPG Limit Break for letting us go ahead and stream on their channel over here. Uh, Night Dew for doing all the work behind the scenes tracking and making us look good because it was on point tonight. Scala Kitty again for the restream and for rolling the seed. It was a masterpiece. And my wonderful co-commentator, Rivers McCown. Man, this is, I love it when we get together and uh, you can make fun of me on stream. It's so much fun. Well, to be fair, I make fun of everybody. Not just... Yes, we we did we we do good work. Um, yeah, this is uh, excited. I'm excited to see you tomorrow, man. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm excited to to get my butt kicked tomorrow as well. But um, it should be a great race tomorrow. Go ahead and tune in tomorrow, seven o'clock Eastern time, right here on RPG Limit Break. Uh, make sure to give RPG Limit Break all these runners, everyone else, a follow. Otherwise, uh, we're going to go ahead and sign off for the night. I think. Okay, I, w I was, yeah, we'll, we'll go ahead and say goodbye. Uh, my name has been Vitation. And I'm Rivers. Take care, everybody. Good night.